So I'll talk about uh, statistical terms and uh, data types today. This is a hypothetical example of uh, group one. Uh, there are hemoglobin values of seven individuals. The lowest value is eight and highest value is 14. So range of hemoglobin is from eight to 14. And if, if you arrange them, in ascending or descending order, the middle value will be 11. So such a description of a data is known as descriptive statistics. Uh, the total number of cases, uh, the dispersion, uh, the range is an example of dispersion of data. Uh, measure of central tendency here, we have uh, used median as a measure of central tendency. So this was the descriptive statistics of group one. Then this is second group. Uh, there are seven observations of hemoglobin. So the count is seven. The range is from 11 uh, gram percent to 25 gram percent and uh, median or middle value is 13. So the, the, these were two groups and uh, the, with descriptive statistics of each. So what is the purpose of descriptive statistics? Descriptive statistics identify pattern in the data. In my other lectures, you will understand what is pattern uh, of a particular data and it identify outliers. For example, if uh, out of seven individuals, which I have shown you in group one, one of the individual have hemoglobin of 18. So it is a very high value where most of the values were in the range of about 11 to uh, 13 or so. So that 18, 18 value, value of 18 is an outlier. So there are statistical methods to identify outliers, but descriptive statistics uh, give us a clue about the presence of outliers. Then uh, descriptive statistics also guide uh, the choice of statistical test. There are many statistical tests available. They can be grouped into parametric statistical test and non-parametric statistical test. Depending on the distribution of the data or the pattern of the data, we can use either the parametric test or non-parametric test. And the descriptive statistics also leads to hypothesis generation. Uh, for example, uh, like in group one, the, me, me, uh, the median was 11, whereas in group two, the median was 13. So we can, uh, we can uh, hypothesize that uh, the uh, hemoglobin values of group two were higher than group one. This is our hypothesis, which needs to be proved uh, by using further statistical test. So uh, when you uh, do a comparative analysis or a correlation analysis of two or more groups, it is known as inferential statistics because you will draw an inference from the result. So uh, uh, the hypothesis is that the hemoglobin of group two is more than hemoglobin of, of uh, group one. And we can use statistical test for uh, proving the hypothesis. So this is about the types of statistical methods. The statistical method can be divided into descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Inferential statistics distinguish two difference from random variation. So uh, there is always some statistical variation because you are taking sample, you are not doing a census study. So there is always some variation. So it uh, distinguishes between true difference from random variation and it allows for hypothesis testing. Descriptive statistics was uh, suggesting a hypothesis, whereas inferential statistics will prove whether the hypothesis is right or wrong. So it allows for hypothesis testing. This was difference between different, uh, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Now we move, move on to a, uh, a thesis of my student. Uh, she has done thesis on breast carcinoma. This is her uh, raw data. So this is a raw data. Uh, each row represent a particular patient. So uh, let us say uh, this, uh, uh, for example, uh, you take the column number E, which is for age. So age in his years. Uh, 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 so age is like uh, age of first patient is 70, second patient is 30, then third patient is 52. 
so these are certain uh, numerical values which are assigned to various age groups then uh, there is column uh, g g column is for menopausal status uh, the menopausal status is assigned as uh, in two options uh, for first patient is a yes y for yes for second patient it is n and for no so the, the, there are two options uh, for each patient uh, 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 for each patient one of the two option is assigned either yes or no so this is another type of data then you look at the column j j column is for lymph node staging so uh, lymph node staging can be either uh, numeric uh, the um, uh, roman numeral 1 or roman numeral 3 or roman numeral 2 so there are uh, there are three options and these three options are meant for staging so stage 1 as you know uh, stage 1 is less than stage 2 and stage 2 is less than stage 3 so advanced form of breast carcinoma is stage 3 and uh, and the lower stage is stage 1 and stage 2 so these uh, options 1 2 and 3 they can be arranged in a meaningful order you cannot arrange the menopausal status yes no in a meaningful order because yes and no are equally important but you can arrange the lymph node stage 1 2 3 3 in a uh, in a meaningful order and uh, so uh, there are you know there are various types of data which uh, a particular which are there in a particular study so let us move on to its type of data so data is a quantitative or qualitative information so it is either quantitative or qualitative information to so both types so uh, what are the qualitative information qualitative information means categorical data categorical data are of two types nominal data and Uh, the second type is ordinal data so let us first see nominal data so nominal data is a type of qualitative data which describes the quality or characteristic of the variable it cannot be described numerically and uh, the data is composed of labels or names and they cannot be arranged in either ascending or descending order so uh, these are the examples for example gender of osteosarcoma patient patients uh this uh, very this uh, attribute gender of a sarcoma patient has two options male or female so uh, then the second example is smoking habit of lung cancer patient it can be either yes or no similarly tobacco chewing habit of patients with oral leukoplakia either yes or no so this is a example of a qualitative data which is known as categorical data and Uh, the further subtype is nominal data because these these are names the other type of categorical data is ordinal data so ordinal data is a type of qualitative data which have gradations and thus can be arranged in meaningful order for example uh, 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 they are coded like 1 2 3 and so on and they can be arranged in either ascending or descending order uh, the example which we have seen in uh, one of the theses i shown uh, showed you Uh, was uh, staging of tumor so what are the other examples staging of carcinoma stage 1 2 3 and 4 so then uh, grade grading of inflammation mild inflammation moderate inflammation severe inflammation these are three names but these can be arranged in either ascending or descending order mild is less than moderate and moderate is less than severe Uh, the other example is grading of dysplasia which can be mild moderate and severe so this this was about qualitative data then we come to quantitative data quantitative data can be of two types discrete data and the continuous data so discrete data is discrete it cannot take fractional values uh, and it is described in terms of median and interquartile range so this this is the descriptive statistics of discrete data for, for example number of children in various standards of school for example number of uh, students in your class Stu uh, it can be either 10 students or 11 students it cannot be 10.5 students 
so it cannot take fractional values discrete data cannot take fractional values so as an example the number of patients with fever attending opd daily over a period of 30 days so such a data is discrete data then uh, the other type of numerical data is continuous data uh, it can take fractional values and it is described in terms of mean and standard deviation usually if it is normally distributed we will discuss about normal distributions later on in some other lecture example of continuous data is age of leukemia patients age can be in fractions 1 1 year 2 year 3 year 4 year 4.5 years 4.6 years similarly other example is hemoglobin level of school children it can be 11 11.1 11.2 11.3 so it can take fractional values the other example is serum hemoglobin level of patients with acute viral hepatitis so these were types of uh, statistical data so statistical data uh, to summarize can be divided into categorical and numerical with further uh, subdivisions of uh, categorical data uh, as nominal data and the ordinal data and uh, subtypes of numerical data are include discrete data and continuous data so this this was about data type then we uh, come on to certain statistical term, terms uh, variable so variable is any characteristic that can vary across individual groups or objects so example of variable is weight of individuals in a particular section of a school uh, class uh, the other example is occupation then uh, similarly these are variables so these variables they can take a particular value for a particular individual so value is the numerical value of particular realization of the variable for instance uh for example one of the person uh, this is a hypothetical example mr gupta uh, whose weight is 147 uh, pounds so value uh, is 147 and the variable is weight so there is difference between variable and value then there is uh, a term known as constant constant is a symbol used to denote an entity which possesses a fixed value Uh, an example of constant is uh, which we have learned uh, in previous uh, uh, your schooling is uh, pi uh, which has a particular value then uh, uh, the other term is attribute so attribute is a feature which cannot be subjected to mathematical calculations so attribute is a kind of variable which uh, uh, which uh, which have a qualitative information so attribute can be either nominal or ordinal data types then uh, what is population population is the entire group for which the final statistical inference are drawn population may be finite or infinite for example if your population is uh, 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 is uh, the individuals which are there in india and you take sample from mumbai delhi kolkata chennai and you do an inferential statistics and you draw a inference and that inference is applied to entire india so the entire india was your population similarly your population can be of entire united states or it can be the entire population of the world so you should understand what is the population for your study and from that population you take a smaller manageable number of objects or individuals which is known as sample so what is sample a sample is a small manageable number of objects individuals of the population from which the data is collected so you collect data from the sample and you the inference from that sample is applied to the population from which you have taken sample so there is difference between population and sample so what is the need for sampling uh, need for sampling is that entire population or universe of interest may not be accessible so they may be in far remote areas they may not be accessible then taking entire population of study will take time so it 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 it, it is time consuming then it is also costly to uh, to examine each and every individual of the population so we we take a small manageable number which is known as sample and sample should be adequate in size and it should be unbiased sample we will uh, learn about the adequacy and unbiased nature of sample later in my some other lecture so 
uh, we study the sample in order to estimate the population feature. So population feature is known as parameter and the quantity we obtain from sample is known as statistics. So uh, usually statistics is not equal to parameter. There is some difference and this difference is known as sampling error. So uh, for example, you take a sample from a population and you calculate mean. The mean is described as X bar and the mean of population is denoted by mu. Similarly, standard deviation of sample is denoted by S, whereas this is denoted by uh, sigma, small sigma. So uh, these are the uh, uh, representations of statistics and sample. So finally, uh, the data can be looked in terms of time as a cross-sectional data, a longitudinal data, or a time series data. Uh, so a, a data which is uh, collected on different elements at same point in time is known as cross-sectional data. You do a particular study at a particular point of time, you examine all the individuals, and that is known as cross-sectional data. If you follow up the individuals over time, and collect data uh, in, the, in various time, point, time points or time periods, then it is known as longitudinal data. So longitudinal data is collected over a period of time. Uh, then there is time series data. Time series data is similar to longitudinal data. The uh, difference is that a time stamp is attached with each observation. So this was uh, uh, my lecture.